The following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And we're back to another excellent edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft host. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. And uh, what do you've got? You've got a uh, market that's a little bit of indecision of course uh the biggest thing happening today is uh it's the day that most market makers go delta neutral uh for the uh big uh, amount of uh, options that are uh gonna expire on the 17th um at this point what they want to do is make sure that there's nothing that can kill them uh if there's an option out there for 10 cents that goes to 100 bucks uh, it is as bad as probably what happened in the Kentucky Derby on Saturday where you had a 65 to 1 uh, payout for uh, whichever horse eventually won. The thing is that as an option market maker, you're always trying to sell uh, equal amounts to both sides. Uh, if you're a uh, bookie and uh, your uh, living is... Uh, selling bets for people playing uh, football, uh, you just sit there and move the spread around until you get more people interested uh, on one side or the other. And you try to just have the, you know, basically the, uh, uh, the most amount that you can get bet on one. And over time, it generally works out fairly well. About 85% of times the odds are correct on paramutual horse racing. That's been studied very well. Um, and, you know, will it get hit over time? Will it be things where it doesn't work out like it did on Saturday for them? Yes. Uh, but for the most part, uh, it does work out over time. So what they're always doing is trying to change the odds by changing the spread in football. Uh, and to some extent, what actually happens is they want to get those options off the table or get them down to a manageable amount that won't blow up in their faces when they're so cheap because then of course people can plunge on them uh about 85 percent of the of time today's low is the low through expiration you have to have a fairly compelling case uh to say that it's going lower on average it will be up 10 times uh, a year through this period. It will be down twice. Uh, it will be down almost 3% uh, on average and be up one to one. And it depends on who you argue with about the way you should do the statistics, but maybe one to 1.2% uh, bullish bias from this time. So a little bit up for, the, for problematic uh, markets or even decent markets a little bit higher and potentially one out of five times much lower three percent on average so the thing is there's just not a lot of those you know two out of 12 times not a big um, batting average for the market going down when it does start down though it does tend to be rather dramatic but today is the day that the timer starts kicking off in the market for those options expiration. It is not uncommon to see them push it down and push it up and push it down and push it up until they can get all of those correct. So I'm not a big fan of trying to jump out in front of this. By about 2, 2.30, most of that is taken care of and you start seeing it develop in the actual options. We saw options weaken very much um, Thursday and Friday and why we went short um, or went into a bearish position with a call on UVXY that we discussed yesterday. 
Well, there were a lot of other reasons. We also discussed that yesterday. Uh, what we have now, though, is a market that probably is in a little bit of limbo. Doesn't have a lot of juice to the upside. Came down on volume. But at the same time, uh, did yesterday or today's low set a low for the next seven days? Well, you know what? They're trying to get an IPO out the door. My guess is that they're going to try to push this thing up yet again into Friday. And probably the best option again is probably going to be waiting until one, probably one in the afternoon on Friday to see if weakness develops once again and we start seeing another setup as we did last Friday. I don't see a lot of uh, risk reward in going long or short right at the moment. Uh, that may develop when I look at the options later tonight as we see the close. A lot of options uh, are done at the very end of the day or reported at the very end of the day. So you don't really get a chance during the market to do a lot of analysis. And it takes me about an hour of going through them at this time in the options expiration cycle to actually see what most of them are saying. I know what they said yesterday. Uh, today's really the difference with that delta neutral. It really tells you what they expect and how much uh, risk they're willing to take uh, going into the next seven days. So we'll keep an eye on that. Um, volume uh, today is probably a little bit different than volume yesterday. Already doing 4.2 billion shares. We ended up doing over 7 billion on the CBOE uh, yesterday, uh, which was uh, fairly significant. Um, in fact, I'll bring that up after the, the break. Uh, but volume is at least good uh, and probably about 500 million shares uh, better than it's been the average probably for the last two weeks. So not an issue with not having bad volume. It's not blowout volume either. And, well, it, there's just not a lot of clues quite yet. Um, will a combination of trade issues and IPOs be enough to suck the oxygen out of the window and see us start moving down into uh, the 27th as we go into the three-day weekend. I think that's very important uh, because generally there is a big change in the market in these three-day weekends that come up across the summer. Uh, three-day weekends in the winter still somewhat but not near as good as the three-day weekends in the summer of uh, changing the character of the market and a lot of times um, more than likely the direction of the market. So if you are bullish longer term, you would love to see this market pull back into the Memorial Day weekend on lighter volume. If you're bearish, you would like to see one more push higher uh, on lighter volume and all the shorts getting out of the market uh, for that. But uh, again, uh, even with the moves yesterday, we don't have, or I didn't see, that many horrific uh, attempts to really short uh, stocks when they were down. That kind of, Generally, when we see everybody decide that it's time to short, it's generally a time to have a big bounce. As we go to break, uh, we'll be back shortly, and we'll look at the, the rest of the stuff. But uh, up four or five points on the S&P cash, up 71 on the Dow, and up four on the NASDAQ. The Taz Profile Scanner is the most revolutionary piece of trading software that you will ever try. Wouldn't you like to approach the markets with confidence? As you begin your trading day, it's likely that you'll be faced with lots of decisions. In order to make the best decision, the first thing you'll need is a strategy that will help you minimize your risks. Whether we're in a bull or bear market, a good strategy is to have the tools needed to help you scan and analyze the markets before you trade. The Taz Profile Scanner instantly scans and filters over 2,500 global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, president of Taz Market Profile, the Taz Profile Scanner understands that in today's technological world, the use of top flight software applications, automated trading algorithms, and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. 
Whether you're looking at the trade matrix, the ETF heat grid, the market breadth, the landscape charts, or the many other features of the TAS Profile Scanner, this is a piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the markets and set up your trades. The team at TAS has even put together a 12-part video series to walk you through every aspect of the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find directly on the TAS Order page at TFNN.com. Sign up now for only $97 a month with a risk-free 30-day trial so you have nothing to lose and everything to gain. See for yourself how you can harness the full power of the TAS Profile Scanner by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services section. Remember, with a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to lose. Don't let another day pass you by without trying out this amazing piece of software that will revolutionize how you look at the market and how you place trades. Sign up today. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. It is nothing but history repeating, or at least rhyming, on this day in 1963, the release of Dr. No. Moviegoers get their first look down the barrel of a gun at super spy James Bond, codenamed 007, the immortal character created by Ian Fleming in his now famous series of novels and portraits on string by the relatively unknown Scottish actor Sean Connery. Um, they were looking for somebody that was rather special. Really didn't know they'd looked at a lot of actors for the part. And uh, they were looking out a window as uh, Connery left the building. And one guy goes, that's got to be him. He goes, the other guy that he was talking to said, well, why do you say that? He said, just watch him walk. He walks like a tiger. And uh, apparently that's what sealed the deal on him getting those movie roles and becoming iconic from then on. Uh, but uh, one of the other things, uh, they left or really uh, got pushed uh, by Ian Fleming to make the movie much closer to the books than a lot of people would have liked. Uh, most uh, movie houses at the time unwilling to make a movie anywhere close to the way the books were. And in fact, they made one, they made actually a couple of attempts before this movie because the books were so popular especially because in 1960, uh, Jack Kennedy said that it was his favorite book to read. Um, Ian Fleming, of course, was somewhat the spy in the Second World War. Unclear exactly what he did. A lot of people say that he overstated what he did in the Second World War, which is not exactly sure what it was. We didn't have uh, YouTube and video and people recording everything back then. But uh, it was interesting, anyway, on this day in 1963, uh, movie legend and 25 movies later, and uh, going on number 26, Bond, James Bond. Anyway, uh, what else do we have going on? We'll look at some of the winners and losers in this market. Uh, again, kind of stuck at this price right now. Not surprisingly to see this market kind of fluctuate. And uh, when we do look at the S&P 500, 
Uh, we're looking at the uh, uh, low of the day at uh, 28.73. My guess is that will hold by the end of the day. So that's the number that we're looking at that this thing is going to close over 80% of the time or more by a week from next Friday. Uh, question is whether or not we get a couple of uh, really bad days, maybe Monday and Tuesday, a hangover from too many IPOs. And uh, we shall see. Uh, anyway, Russell's off a uh, buck 20. No big deal. Like I said, uh, kind of a, a tight move. When we looked at options yesterday, we were talking about maybe 2850 uh, being the low. Just uh, volume did kind of drop off uh, down at those lows after they ran all the stops. So that may be it for the next seven days. We may not have a lot more uh, on the high side as uh, many people were uh, actually selling uh, shares to actually buy some of these new IPOs. Uh, and let's see, what else do we have? Uh, question about DDD. Uh, one of the traders has it in here. Nice bounce off the lows. It blew apart on earnings, uh, if we can actually get that. Uh, down on fairly decent volume. Uh, this has a history of kind of doing this and then filling the gap fairly quickly. Um, sales probably not as bad as it would, uh, as you would think. Uh, when I was looking through them this morning. Uh, but certainly, um, this field is really starting to get uh, a lot hotter, and it probably should have done a lot better. I think SSYS came out a few days ago, uh, if I'm not mistaken, and it did a lot better. It's uh, opened down a little bit on that, uh, but these things are starting to settle out, and uh, new technologies might bring a second life into these stocks, a uh, much larger life in the near future. Uh, let's see what else we have. You can email me at path at tfnn.com, and we already have some. Knowing that stock market is Trump's biggest Trump card, do you agree he's getting lots of coaching to make sure the China deal sounds good? Eh, I think he's more interested in the long term. If he gets this deal set, uh, and certainly takes care of a lot of the inter intellectual property theft. Um, it's just going to be a good deal. In 2012, um, one of the probably the uh, things that Trump keyed on most was a speech that Obama gave uh, to Westinghouse officials in Ohio. He just said, your jobs are never coming back. And we're not going to do anything about it. And that's it. Just You better figure out something else other than to do. And I don't think that was probably wise politically, but certainly Donald Trump has capitalized on it. Uh, to me, if he gets a good deal out of this, it means more business here, especially in the heartland, uh, where, is, where his uh, voters tend to be much more uh, – optimistic about his agenda opposed to others. And uh, you know what? I, anytime you can get somebody a job, uh, they're probably a lot happier than living on welfare. So I think he's doing everything correctly. The question is whether or not you can get a deal out of uh, Xi in China. Uh, because, of course, when you rule in a country like that, Everybody's looking to stick a knife in your back and take over at a moment's notice. He's more of a dictator than anything else. Dictators can't even start to think to look weak. And that is the problem of making a deal with China right now. Is any deal probably makes Z, Z, Z look weak and problematic. Um, but again, I think a lot of people think that the end of the world comes with tariffing uh, putting tariffs on Chinese goods. I just think we're going to see a lot of people start building and making stuff here in the United States instead of getting it from China. Probably a better deal for U.S. citizens. Probably not such a good deal uh, for people dumping steel and uh, other products from China. Uh, there's always a winner and loser. We've just kind of capitulated for the last 20 years to China on all their intellectual property thefts. 
uh, and uh, turned a blind eye to it. I hate to say that you try to reward people for doing the right thing, whether or not the outcome's right, but uh, most likely politically, he will be rewarded if it works out and be penalized if it does not. But uh, eh, he's taking a big swing, uh, not trying for a little bunt to get on base. Okay, what else do we have out here? Uh, thanks, Kevin. Uh, what else do we have? Oh, we're going to break. That's about it. Uh, we'll be back in a minute. We'll start looking at a lot of these other stocks that moved today because uh, there are a lot. Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Hi folks, Tom O'Brien here. If you'd like to get my daily newsletter, Market Insights, then now is a great time to sign up for a 30-day free trial. Every morning by 9.30, I send out my morning letter to subscribers with market commentary on a variety of markets, currencies, and commodities to keep investors up to date on the day's trading action. Included in Market Insights are specific buy and sell recommendations for stocks, ETFs, and even options, with stops and price targets included for every trade in my newsletter. If you'd like to try my newsletter risk-free for 30 days, then head over to the front page of TFNN and you'll find Market Insights under Trading Newsletters. I use my years of trading experience to bisect and dissect the market every morning and give my subscribers the most important information they need to know for the day ahead. I even issue afternoon updates for my subscribers whenever warranted with important market action. I'm always scouring the market for the next great trading opportunity. Sign up for your 30-day free trial to my daily newsletter, Market Insights, today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Wow! Go get them, folks! TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that we'll even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Well, we're up a couple of points uh, on the S&P cash, up uh, seven and a half points now. Dow's up uh, over 100, NASDAQ's up 18. I don't know if we had any news during the break or if it just uh, it's the end of options expiration a rollover. Uh, they actually call it going delta neutral. Um, and you can look that up, or if you want to email me, you can at path at tfnn.com. I'll be glad to uh, send you some links uh, on exactly what that is. But again, a mathematical determination of when the risk reward uh, pretty much uh, hits is 
fairly well defined, so they all kind of do it all at the same time. Um, now on earnings, a lot of stocks uh, moving, and uh, uh, go ahead and take a look at, at those. Uh, on the biggest loser side, uh, we have uh, WOU, um, and that's U2. I think this is a Chinese outfit. Now let's take a look at the uh, profile here to make sure on um, what they do. Operates an educational technology company in the United States, Hong Kong, South Africa, and United Kingdom. Uh, the company operates through two segments, graduate programs segment and short course segment. It offers front-end technologies and services, including online earning platforms. And yeah, I think a lot of those actually are aimed at uh, China. Knees individuals, if I remember right. Uh, anyway, it went down to the previous low of 44.50. That was December 26. Uh, that had a million shares. You're through there today with six million shares, but it's kind of acting as support as you get into it. Uh, but uh, not a great day at BlackRock, uh, if you know what I mean. You like those 50s westerns. Um, what else do we have? Another one in the... Uh, Another one in the biotech space acting a little weird and poorly. Uh, gap down and continue to go down uh, fairly extensively. Closed or hit a high of 35.24 uh, yesterday, uh, down to 26.02. Again, finding support at previous lows. That was the February 6th low at 26.05 with 2 million shares. You got uh, 3.7 so far and uh, you've gone about three cents underneath it and it's holding there so those uh, previous levels are acting fairly well uh, other uh, stocks of note on the loser side uh, was meet me uh, it uh, is an online platform for communication uh, blew through its Previous low, but not the previous, previous low. March 6, $4.88. Uh, just, uh, let's call it 5.9 million shares on that March 6 low. Tested it with lighter volume. Uh, did bounce up uh, about a buck up to that May 3rd high of uh, $5.89. And a massive retreat uh, back below 5 bucks. The one thing about stocks that are around here on 5 bucks is you can't really short them anymore. So as soon as they duck under five bucks, there's generally a lot less shorting. Um, big men of the street can continue to short. Uh, most retail traders won't allow you to short anything under five bucks. But uh, I don't think that's dictated, dictated by anybody other than the uh, broker dealers themselves. Uh, on the positive side uh, are some big ones. Match Group. Uh, M-T-C-H. Uh, I think this company has a lot of risk, uh, but uh, doesn't seem to be showing up quite yet in the market. Uh, but uh, this is a company that uh, does Grindr and, and uh, all those other uh, hookup apps, as they like to say. A uh, nice big move here today, up on 5.8 million shares. Hey, this is one of those stocks where you don't know where it's going to go, but uh, the first time that we get yet another sexually transmitted disease, uh, probably uh, going in the dumper. Um, you just don't know when that's going to pop up. Other uh, stocks of interest, uh, let's see if there's anything out here. BG was interesting to me as we look at that. Again, you can give me a call at 877-927-6648. Uh, Bungie, nice pop higher today, uh, up with about uh, the same volume that we saw on April 9th, $53.96. About 20 cents shy of getting into that today. Again, a lot of people all want to buy all the way to the previous highs and then kind of give up. Now, the downside is this February 25th high had about uh, 5.8 million shares at 54 bucks. So as you get back up here, you really want to see a lot more juice uh, to go through those February highs 
We're not getting it on most stocks of interest. Uh, let's see, QVRO. Uh, to, 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 to look at that. Okay. Why is everything so slow today? Probably because I'm not. No. That's why, because I'm not PQR VO. I'm not typing it correctly. That would do it. No, it has nothing to do with Windows 10, you Luddite, our engineer who uh, hates uh, anything beyond Windows 95, apparently. And he's stuck in time. We had another engineer that was even stuck earlier. He was stuck in about 1982 and dressed like it. Uh, Corvo, uh, when we look at this, uh, you did have a nice pop higher today. And of course, this one provides radio frequency solutions technology for mobile devices. Uh, we talk about this kind of technology as the black arts, if you watch your Hogwarts stuff. Uh, but it, it certainly is a, a nice move up to the previous high. Eh, I didn't look at Qualcomm today uh, beyond lunch. Let's take a quick look at that. Uh, not a lot. Um, Qualcomm's got two nice gaps. Probably going to get a third out of it um, before it quits going up. But the question is, does it get back down to the $75 range first? Anyway, as we were looking at Cuervo, uh, an interesting technology play. Uh, and certainly a nice bounce. Uh, any of these companies uh, going forward that are doing the right thing will be in 5G. We'll probably have a fairly decent day. Kind of a long and interesting uh, candle today in Corvo. Uh, but uh, they uh, do a lot of interesting stuff. LNA switches, um, uh, uh, gallium arsenide chips that are resistant to... Uh, solar flares and stuff for the military, electronic warfare systems, a lot of interesting stuff. Anyway, um, nice pop on that. You probably, if you're looking at 5G, you want to put this and keep it on your radar for all the rest of them. And see what else we have. Oh, we're going to break already. Give me a call, 877-927-6648. I'm liquid, uh, looking forward to your dulcet tones on TFNN. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors.
Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. And we're back. We'll look at a few more stocks. I uh, well, uh, wanted to see how well some of the ones that everybody's instantly going to want to rush back into, like Microsoft, are there. Actually, somewhere around support, if you look at this gap higher from earnings on the 25th of last month, gapped up on 30 million shares. Yesterday, you were down with 36 million shares. So not that far off, only slightly on the uh, side of bullishness, um, kind of a sideways action out here on lighter volume. Um, and uh, let's take a quick look at LYFT. Um, it's kind of uh, pulling back a bit on heavier volume. Got 16 million shares compared to the low on April 26. Um, as far as the IPO with Uber goes, there were, uh, there were a ton of uh, the drivers that were going to strike on Friday when the IPO went out, and they responded to it with showering them with money. If you don't strike and you actually work on Friday, uh, some drivers that have been with them since the beginning will get upwards of $20,000. Uh, most will get uh, at least uh, enough to make a small difference in their life. Uh, but uh, when all else fails, uh, green mail them. That's right. Send them some of that green stuff. Womp them. Uh, simoleons. As long as we have, in God, we trust on it. That's it. Uh, do, 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 okay. Uh, da, da, da. Okay. I'm just looking at a few other things going on here and see if there's anything going on. Yeah, doesn't see a lot there. Um, check back in. Eh, we're up nine points on the S&P cash. Go back to all the stuff that I normally look at. Got a question coming in on GLD. Uh, okay. Uh, if uh, the Japan markets have closed, how do you think their market will affect ours when they come back on board? That was over on the 5th. That was uh, the golden, the golden whatever it was, golden corral days in Japan. Uh, that was the April 1st through the 5th. Uh, but as it came back, of course, we'd already kind of uh, turned south on Friday. And I think that's a bit of it. But uh, those uh, um, question of whether or not I'm still short. I do have a uh, long-term short position. That's probably going to take years in the Tech Insider. I also have a uh, short position in the daily newsletter uh, that I'm going to let sit just because I do suspect uh, that whatever comes out of this trade deal, whatever happens, uh, there's a lot more downside in, in the third world. And uh, that's where we're short. Uh, two, two, two. Okay. Anyway, lift down today. Not a lot of expecting a NFLX. Let's look at all the stocks that everybody just thinks that they must own. Uh, not bad on Netflix so far today. You're back into this big candle up on the 22nd. 
Uh, that had uh, about 12 million shares. Back down to it with about 4.7. So not a lot of juice so far today, even yesterday, uh, about 7 million shares. So you're kind of back to these support levels. Certainly looks to me like about 352 uh, is where this thing is probably going to stop going back down. It didn't have a good earnings call. But I think there were a lot of people that got short at the very end. They ran it anyway. And uh, now it's kind of coming back down. It may take a little bit uh, longer uh, for this to settle out. But I think maybe by the time you get to uh, the end of May or maybe mid-June, this may be ready to have kind of a right shoulder and uh, go back down lower. Their costs are becoming rather expensive. Uh, if anybody saw the movie The Hateful Eight uh, from uh, Tarantino, he's got another movie coming out this summer, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, I think is what it's called. Uh, but Hateful Eight, uh, to save money, uh, Netflix wants to chop them up. Uh, that had, it had five chapters in the movie. Going to chop it up into four chapters. I'm not exactly sure why. Seems a lot more likely they should have just chopped it into five and, and been done with it. But uh, they're getting Tarantino to cut it up uh, as kind of a serialized version of itself. Uh, and, of course, since almost everything's done, won't take a lot to, uh, to do that. Uh, but it's a they're paying him a lot of money to see if that isn't a better way uh, to... Uh, uh, try to get and wrinkle out all the money they can out of individual movies that they do and other people do instead of just showing you the two-and-a-half-hour movie uh, or three-hour movie, I guess, if you're watching The Avengers, which may be what they're looking at. Can we get one of these big movies that's incredibly too long and uh, cut them up? But uh, eh, nonetheless, it is an issue. Amazon... Um, didn't quite make it back up to the highs. Did get to uh, 1964.40 a couple of days ago. Uh, that's where you really had a lot of push back down. Uh, last handful of days, you had one really good day on the 26th of April. Uh, and it really hasn't done much. You had a little gap up here on the 3rd, uh, but it didn't have uh, enough juice. You're kind of back in here. 2000 is probably some level of resistance, and I continue to think that that probably in the next six months that we're going to have antitrust um, issues with Amazon, uh, Facebook, at least those two, and it may even go on to others. So I think right now probably the best you're probably going to get in Amazon for a while, uh, but, uh, you know, you can always turn that spigot on and make more money. Uh, to, 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 what else do we have? More emails. We've got emails. Got lots of emails. What else is going on out here? Okay, uh, to, 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 what else? Uh, to, to, to. Question about the S&P 500. How close we got uh, to that gap that I thought we could get to, which was 2850. Um, of course, we had about 3.8 billion shares on the S&P. Actually, the NASDAQ, or not, yeah, the NYSE Tape A yesterday, which is the best way to look at the S&P uh, 500 volume because, of course, their stock's always going in and out. So you tend to look at all the stocks on the NYSE uh, for the volume on the S&P. Um, you know, you gave back about half of it. You're kind of stuck in this gap right now that uh, I don't know. Let's go back and look at this real quick. And we're up about eight points. I think we're probably up against resistance and back uh, against support in a narrow range. Um, but uh, we shall see. We'll be back in a minute and wrap up the show. Still have plenty of time to call me at 877-927-6648. I'm certain you
you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12, six, and three months. Timer Digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well. The fact is, markets can be timed, and I'll teach you the exact set of tools that I use that has transformed me into one of the best at what I do. Sign up for Mastering Probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of TFNN.com and get immediate access to workshops where I take you step-by-step -step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. Sign up today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And uh, John from Philadelphia and the Tiger's Den basically posting. Uh, the, the Chinese are running uh, to the hills on buying U.S. bonds, which is probably no surprise as we uh, put the screws to them on trade. Uh, but it always makes me think of Operation Petticoat. Uh, it was a good movie. It ran on uh, UHF television stations a lot. I tended to catch it uh, every time it was on. I always loved submarines. Uh, but uh, uh, one of the lines in that movie... Uh, was Tony Curtis, who was kind of a conniver and a, uh, a uh, uh, acquirer of things that he probably he should not be. Uh, but his motto was, in confusion, there is profit. And uh, I think we have a lot of confusion. And if you can cut through it and get to the heart of it, I think that there is some profit to be made. Um what is a Delta neutral for Apple and Microsoft? It is not kind of a thing. It is just them rearranging the deck chairs. If you've got, uh, if you sold a lot of puts and you sold a lot of calls, right? Maybe there are a lot more calls now than puts, or maybe there are a lot more puts now than calls. Your idea is to get those back in line. So if you have to take some off the table right now, um, of course, the premiums are always decaying, 
And the idea is that if you don't make it on one side, you're going to make it on the other. But you just want to reduce the risk so that if it goes up or goes down, you don't really lose or win any more money. And that's just literally selling guns to both sides or taking away uh, guns from one side that maybe there's a little too much. All you want to do is balance the amount of risk on both sides of the options chain for the next seven trading days. And uh, I'll send you a link to what Delta Neutral is. In the meantime, sell when you can, not when you have to. We'll see you tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time.